could be a Snickers. You reckon Snickers? Or Ripple. But what if you want to dial an 8 out of 10 car into an 11 out of 10 car? What? There's a note attached to the top of a control unit. Come take this car away. There's nothing we can do with it. It's dangerous. This is the 986 Generation Porsche Boxster. A car I liked so much that after filming with this very one, I bought it to keep for myself. This being a 2002 car, you'll find the later 220 horsepower 2.7 litre flat six in the middle. With a factory fresh 0 to 60 time of 6.5 seconds and a 155 mile an hour top speed. As standard, these are great to drive with a decent exhaust note, a low slung driving position and fairly sharp handling. What's more, you can pick up decent boxsters for well under £5,000 now, which got me thinking. Why aren't more people buying these things? After all, Porsche themselves have given them classic car status, so parts should be cheaper. And when you think that Mark 1 MX-5s are now well within boxster pricing territory, which would you rather daily drive? Thankfully for me though, I don't need to answer that question because I've got one of those too. Albeit with a Porsche-derived V6. Well, technically a Jaguar V6, which is also technically a Ford V6. Either way, shut up. The point here is that I think it's time that more people wised up to boxsters as cool little sports cars with a lot of potential. So consider this video a boxster buyer's guide and what to look out for when you go to check one out. Out on the roadside. Porsche very kindly invited us and said, hey Alex, you've got an awesome car. Let's take a look. Let's do a kind of buyer's guide. Let's show all of your audience why these cars are so awesome. And I actually agree. So first of all, we do like a walk around. Yeah. Just see what we've got. Okay. Visually. Yeah. Uh, then get it up in the air and see what might be underneath. If, you know, hopefully everything's okay. fine. Okay. Yeah. And yes, we are going to be talking about IMS bearings, which this one is not suffering from because it's done 125,000 miles. Yeah, you'll be fine. Before we continue, a quick shout out to this week's video sponsor, Rocket League, which is an awesome free-to-play game available on PC via the Epic Games Store, as well as PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. Welcome to the Epic! If you're not already familiar with this high-octane game, the concept is simple but addictive. Take rocket-powered cars, throw them in an arena, and play football, competing against friends and players from around the world. And now for the month of July in Rocket League's summer road trip, they're featuring limited time modes and some classic cars for the first time since the game's free-to-play launch last year. Included are a Ford F-150, Knight Rider's legendary kit, Back to the Future's DeLorean, as well as the Jeep Wrangler from Jurassic World. So what are you waiting for? Use the link below to download Rocket League now and get playing. I've been working for Porsche for 17 years. My main role here is to look after all the press cars for Porsche Cars Great Britain. So and what about the classics? Because I see you've got um, you've got a first gen 986 that's Boxster right, yeah. out there. Yeah, we do get involved with some of the classics as well. So anything right back to air cooled 911s, 944s, up to sort of 986. These are now 25 years old. That's and right. Porsche has given them classic status. There's uh, different rates for servicing and parts, more competitive rates. Okay. So it keeps the cars within the dealer network nice. and maintained as they should be. So it's been cleaned up. It's yep. cleaned up really well, yep. which is good. Um, did notice slight paint differences. So it's probably had a little bit of paintwork at some point. A little bit of damage on the rear bumper. I think someone might have Where? nudged the back. There's a bit of a bit of a crease there. Yeah, so, didn't notice uh, that before. Other than that, it looks really good. No rust, obviously, because it's Do these nice suffer body. from rust ever? Um, no, because they're galvanised oh, bodies excellent. from the factory. Like old Peugeots? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Original chassis sticker. It's always a good indication that it's never had any paintwork or any serious damage, let's say. Seals okay. replaced, that kind of thing. Everything looks good in there. Even the kick plates are all, all good. Notice indicators um, missing. A little yeah. reflector unit down the bottom here. I need a new uh, lens that goes in the bottom here. Okay, so I don't need to replace the whole light. They come, you can get them separate. Oh, okay. So, that sounds yeah. a lot cheaper. I yeah. Like the sound of that. <laughs> Original bonnet crest, it's in good condition. How do you know? So they change them over a period of time, so the newer ones are completely smooth. Hood, did you say works all over? Okay? It goes down, but then going up, it's just like, nah. But there's all little ball sockets which hold the yeah. bars that yeah, go yeah, to the yeah. motor. It might just need retiming. Uh, and I didn't know your, your boxer badge. Oh, on the B. Missing part of your B. There, yeah. So. But if you didn't know, you wouldn't know, right? Exactly, yeah. Think we'll get the car up in here and have a look underneath. All right, yeah. excellent. Okay, so we've got the car up to a halfway point. Yeah. Um, so this is usually where we check the air intakes on the front bumper. Um, so you've got your air conditioning condensers and radiators. There's quite a lot of um, debris, like leaves and bits, because they are like a leaf catcher as such on the front. And what is that in the back there? 
It could be a Snickers. You reckon Snickers? Or a Ripple. Yeah, maybe there's a bit of chocolate left in there. <laughs> After you. You might need a new air conditioning condenser on this size. You yeah. said the air conditioning is still working? It still works, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's something though that to be mindful of and also get all of that debris out of the air intakes as well yeah. because if they're not cleaned out on a regular basis, the leaves and that sort of decompose and it can rot out the bottom of the radiators. On this side, there's air conditioning pipes which run all the way along the underneath of the car. Um, you've got jacking points, but if people just jack the cars up, like any getting tyres replaced, that kind of thing, they've got to make sure you don't crush the Yeah, the don't compost. jack them up on the air pipes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one thing to be mindful of as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's easy to spot. I mean, you can just poke your head under the car if you're going to look at buying one. These have been replaced. I can see the stickers. Discs actually look relatively new. And the pads are about 50% warm. Okay. So that 50% that yeah. was probably done on that one track day. Was it? Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a quick looking at the suspension. You see the top mounts, there's a little bit of surface corrosion on yeah. the actual plate itself, which is just something, make a note of it. It's not critical. And the bump stops are just starting to perish. What's that about? Uh, oh, you've got a, oh, that's the cable for the rear boot release. So that should be tucked up behind the rear light. It seems to have made its way under the bumper somehow, yeah. so. I wasn't actually good. able to get in there this morning. So if you pull on that, would it open the back? See, the boot's open now. Again, like you do with the front, just have like a little wedge tool, just to gently lift the light up, just gently so you don't crack the light or damage the paintwork yeah. on the bumper. And then a little hook, even like a wire coat hanger, okay. just to go in and you should be able, if you use a torch, you can usually just see it underneath the rear light and then you just pull it out and pop the boot. What about criminals watching this? We've got some brake pipes running down this side. These are like the, from the ABS pumps, the rear brake pipes are actually in quite good condition. Yeah, they're really happy, A little yeah. bit of surface corrosion on them. What we'll do now is get it up in the air and we'll have a look underneath it and see what, see what we've got. We only need to get the car up another two inches and then we can walk under it freely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. It's all right, I get it all the time. I've had years of this. <laughs> we start from the back, work our way forwards. Um, there's a couple of heat shields missing from over the top of the cat converters. Don't put any cakes in the boot of this one then. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I have noticed you've got an under tray missing, um, ah. which is a little bit of a bracket there. There's still a screw here. Yeah. A little bit of under tray left there. So that's probably been pulled off at some point. So that, that might be at the track somewhere on some grass. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's a little bit of misting around where the rear main area is here. So. So does that mean I've got IMS failure? No. 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 Let's talk about that, because that is going to be like a big talking point about this. Yeah. How many cars have you seen or experienced in your, your time here that have come in with that? In all the years I've been here, which is 17 years, I've probably seen two. Oh, really? Something like that, yeah. Oh. Um, I think with the way the internet and forums have kind of picked up over the years, there's been a lot more, not scaremongering, but there's been a lot more talk about it. It's not half as bad as okay. what you read. Because you only read horror stories as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, you, all you'll see is on the internet, don't do this, da da da, we it's this, it's that. But I'll be honest with you, it's not been anywhere near okay. what, what is talked about. Um, this arm looks new. It's a control arm. Oh yeah. That so is. the Bright aluminium is a good way, so that might have been replaced. No coolant leaks, which is good. So we've got your coolant pipes just here. Yeah. You've got your thermostat housing in here. Water pump, if you look under here, looks like it's been replaced. You know how shiny oh, the yeah. pulley is. Oh, that's very good. Pulley looks new, so it looks like it's had a new water pump at some point. So how easy is it to change the water pump? That's one great thing about Porsches is the engineers think about the people who've got to work on them as well. Yeah, um, yeah. So a lot of it is there's a panel which goes behind the rear seats. That comes away like an inspect service panel and you can get in, remove the belt, drive belt, and you can actually get half the pump out there and drop it out the bottom here. Oh, decent. So, okay. The chassis is in great condition as well, so there's not been any like, stone chips, any road rash, so... But they've got undersill, good coating of undersill on here as well, yeah. which has lasted really well. This is the front control arms as well. Just to inspect the bushes there, that the dust seals are all okay, there's no yeah. splits, that kind of thing. And these are called... Uh, Coffin arms, because of the shape of them, the uh, lower arms. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, well, they probably so, do look like coffins, don't they? So uh, yeah, the bushes all look good in those. So it might, you know, over the years, it's probably had good maintenance and bits yeah. like that on there. So it's been well looked after. You can just see if I go around it and even the bolts and bits like that, they're all original because they've got this kind of green and uh, like finish to them. So they're yeah. actually like original finish on the stuff. So you, you get an idea of what OEM parts look yeah, like yeah. as well, and just the finish on them. Excellent. I'm actually really impressed. Right, so what we're going to do now is have a quick look at the engine and there's yeah. method. Roof goes into a service position. 
and then you've got the carpet section which goes behind the seats and a service panel that all comes off and it gives you access uh, to the top of the engine. Good stuff. So if you have a Boxster, this is how you do it. <laughs> right, what we're going to do, I'm going to open the hood. Is that a good noise? It's going the wrong way, isn't it? So it's a manual adjustable hood now. It is a manual adjustable hood, yeah. So you probably want to have a look at the motors. They're the arms that we spoke about earlier. Yeah. I'd probably say one of them's come off. We'll have a look in a moment. Wait, give it a box to chop. It's two little cables, which tension the rear of the hood. Oh, that pops out nice and easy. Yeah. And clips in the back here, it's like a rain tray. So where are these offending items then, so, is it? Oh, you can see here. It's, these with the red ends? Yep. Yeah, so you've got your motor in yeah, there. That's yeah. your, your uh, gearbox for the motor, just in here. Yeah. And the little red ball sockets have snapped off. Yeah. So that's why you've now got a manual hood. Okay. Let's so undo these. Yeah. So that's your oddments bin. Oh yeah. That's your carpet section there. Undo this panel. There's your engine. There you go. So there's your, your inlets there with the switch over valve in the middle here. Air intake, air box is here. Mm -hmm. So that's where your air filter would sit. It all looks pretty good, it's dusty. Yeah. And also, while we're in here, yeah. you've got your hood drains as well. This is a, another thing that you've really got to check on boxes. That, that doesn't... Again, it's part of the service schedule. Right, so now we're going to have a quick look in the front. Luckily, we've got the emergency release. The emergency Just... criminal pulley release. Not, no, not the criminal one. Okay. Just, yeah. yeah. So, get into the boot. So I'll notice straight away, it's got the original chassis sticker. It's a good indication the car's never had the bonnet replaced, Excellent. which is also, you could chance never had a front end uh, accident. So God, it just again, gets better and better, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's all these little details that kind of just reassure you. There are drains for the bulkhead itself here, yeah. which are tucked right down the bottom, down the side of the battery. But you'll yeah. make sure they are clear because it will actually fill up the bulkhead oh and then find its way through the air box or the heater intake and you end up with wet carpet. Right, so it is now the last piece of the puzzle. Rich is going to um, do the diagnostics. Yeah. So you need to plug into the OBD2, which is us under the dash here. Passenger side under the dash. It might give us a little indication of what's going on with the windows. Yeah, because the windows don't work. When you open the door, they pop down and yeah. they pop back up. But when you try and use the buttons, yeah. nothing. So I think he's got a few electrical gremlins, yeah. which could all, all pinpoint to one Thing like the windows, central lock, it could all be down to like one one little control unit or something like that. Yeah. But, but probably a, a little hour's diagnosis messing around. Okay. It wouldn't take long to. It's all right, we've got all day. Around. Yeah. What? There's a note attached to the top of a control unit. We have a brand new body module for this vehicle. Please give me a ring and I will explain. What? <laughs> Written on the control unit is a card. So we have a brand new body module for this vehicle. Please give me a ring and I'll explain. Wow, okay. Should we give him a ring? <laughs> Let's give him a ring. Is there a number? There's a card attached to it. Should I take it off? Yeah. We, we got to get in touch with this person. While I try to connect you. I've got a uh, Porsche Boxster that I bought um, a little while ago. I've just been having a look at a control module underneath the passenger seat and yep. there is a, a, a letter on it that says, we have a brand new body module for this vehicle. Please give me a ring and I will explain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I take it you just bought that vehicle. Yeah, I've had it for a few weeks and I've just, um, I'm actually at um, Porsche in Reading with a Porsche specialist, um, just trying to see if we can diagnose the issues. Um, basically we had it in, um, looked at the vehicle, and I had a problem with the locking um, windows and the roof. Yep. Um, and basically, the main control unit underneath the passenger seat had basically filled up water. We said to him, the only way you're going to get this vehicle back 100% right is get a new control unit from Porsche and get it programmed in. We can't do the programming. We haven't spoken to them since, uh, but they turned around to him and said, come take this car away. There's nothing we can do with it. It's dangerous. Oh, maybe that explains all the blood inside. Uh, 
I'm, I'm joking. I don't know. I'm joking. I don't I'm joking. Know about that side of it. I'm only we, joking, mate. I'm joking. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> all right. Well, um, thank you very much for the um, for the insight. I will um, relay all of that information to the Porsche man who's actually standing right next to me. Thank you very much for your help. Okay, no problem. Nice one, mate. Bye bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye bye. <laughs> I need to lie down after that. That was a lot of yeah, a lot of information. Well, he's a very nice guy. Yeah, very nice guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So, are we going to fix that today? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds of things. The drains have been blocked and the car's filled up with water. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. That's a nice bit yeah. of story, isn't it? A plot thickens. Yeah. Oh. But the whole dangerous thing? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Yeah. Nothing obviously dangerous, but... No. No. All right. Well, that'll do me. Maybe, anyway. maybe that was an excuse just to get them gone. I yeah. think so, yeah. yeah. And if the Porsche man says that it's actually okay, then I think I believe him. So we've established the boxes are pretty good out of the box. But what if you want to dial an 8 out of 10 car into an 11 out of 10 car? Thankfully, that's fairly easily achieved with a few choice modifications. Cue Bruno da Silva of BDS Motorsport who's done just that with his 3.2 Boxster S. According to Bruno, there are five things that make a big difference, starting with the exhaust, which is very restricted from factory. These benefit from swapping out the unequal length manifolds to equal length manifolds, which really help the torque curve. In terms of suspension, this is pretty soft from factory, giving the Boxster a more relaxed, comfortable ride. According to Bruno, a set of BC coilovers suits the car well, giving the car more chassis dynamism and fun factor. And while we're on the subject of handling, the Boxster is also more biased towards understeer from factory, so alignment is well worth fettling with. While increasing the front width with spacers makes the car feel more dynamically sound at the front. Another crucial upgrade to the Boxster, according to Bruno, is fitting an LSD. No 986 generation Boxster came with one, and adding this transforms the car into something more befitting a focused driver's car. And if you want to go a little deeper, engine tuning yields good results too. As an example, Bruno's pre-facelift Boxster S that's fitted with his own 1100-pound BDS Stage 2 upgrade, which includes an intake, bigger throttle body and a map, makes 275 horsepower versus 252 horsepower as standard. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, we spent a very good day having a very good look at my Porsche Boxster. Thank you very much to Rich Payne for having a look over it. What are your thoughts on this car? Have I bought a good one? You have bought a good car. Well worth the money. No horror stories. Yeah. Uh, apart from whatever it was, the love letter under the seat. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But no, you've got a good car. So you're happy. If you're yeah. happy, I'm very happy. Good. Um, and I hope that watching this video, kind of buyer's guide, look at mine, will inspire you guys to think about buying a Porsche Boxster. You could have one for about five grand or under. It's a classic car now, thanks to Porsche. It's easy-ish to work on. And what's more, even though it's 20 years old, plus all the push pins, everything works. There's no kind of horror stories underneath. Anyway, if you've enjoyed watching this video, then make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and check out more videos where Rich over there somewhere and uh, thank you very much again to Porsche for having us over and buying us lunch as well that's really good here cheers uh, anyway from me from Rich and from Porsche goodbye have a great week <laughs>